Hammers. I got a bunch of them. But it seems I never have the right hammer for whatever it is that I need it for. This little ball peen hammer. This is a great little hammer. But sometimes it's just too small. And I like these bigger hammers that have these removable heads. This one's too big. But I love this concept. So, we're going to make a metal hammer cast into a 3D printed mold. That's right. 3D printed mold. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and the making. Alfred Backpack Hanger. It's sturdy, reliable, versatile, and holds all your stuff. Available in stainless steel and aluminum. Get yours today. The new design and making store now has lure lock squeeze bottles, pilot gel pens, rulers, and other supplies for all your model making needs. Plus, our new custom design and making eco grip blade handles in aluminum, copper, stainless steel, and brass. This video's sponsor is Jigga. It's one of my new manufacturing partners. I create the CAD, I upload it, I specify the material that I want, I pick the vetted supplier that I like, kick off the project and pay, communicate with them if they have any questions, wait for the part to show up, and boom, you get something like this. Check them out for your next project. Jigga.io. Oh, I love saying Jigga. I'm gonna start this project like I do many other design projects, and that's with some basic sketching to help me understand the proportions of the object that I'm designing. I know roughly how big I want this hammer head to be, so I use the existing ball peen hammer to establish the size. And this is once I've done this three quarter view on top, that gives me a rough idea of what it is that I'm going for. And so this sketch helps me just work out the scale and the proportions of the thing in an actual side view. And then we can use that in CAD to help us build a CAD model that is proportionate to the sketch so we can get our proportions right at least in the beginning to start the project. This is the first CAD version based on that sketch that you just saw me do. And then ultimately I 3D print a whole bunch of these in PLA so I can adjust the proportions and make the thing look nicer than the sketch was in the beginning and develop it. And then this is the final CAD that we're gonna go with and print. These are the two Formlabs resin printers that we have here at Bots and Design. This is the Form 3. This one uses a laser to fire into the resin to cure the different layers. With the Form 4, they've changed that technology to an LCD screen and it just turns on and off. And this has significantly reduced print times while maintaining quality, if not improving quality, of the parts. The resins have also come down in price from the Form 3. And this has also been a really nice bonus with the Form 4. The different types of resins in terms of durometers, color, and material properties are absolutely fantastic. And it's all baked in, of course, uh, into that system where you just change the settings in the slicer and it does everything for you, which is fantastic. I don't wanna mess with my machine. I wanna hit the button, go, and then come back when the part is done because I got other stuff to do. I don't wanna spend time messing around with my 3D printer. If you wanna get a Form Labs machine, there's going to be a link in the description below where you can get $500 off with my code below if you want to get into one of these machines. This is the mold that we're going to 3D print in the 10K resin on the Form Labs 4 printer. Here's the finished print pulling it off the printer and we'll pop this into the wash machine. Flexible print bed and that just pops right off and it gets cleaned here in the first stage wash machine. It'll ultimately go into the next wash machine and get cleaned again. 
these are how the parts fit together this is a very solid sturdy kind of material this 10k resin uh, a hard plastic fits together real nice and there's our poor hole and our vents I've never cast anything in metal in my life. Oh, I take that back. I did some tin soldiers when I was a little kid once. Uh, and so I picked up this pan at the local thrift store and I'm just hammering in a little spout so we can pour the metal out once it gets melted nicely into the mold. And I'm just using some basic tools to do this. Yes, that's gonna work. Awesome. To make this hammerhead, we're going to use tin bismuth. This has a melting point that's relatively low of 281 degrees F. And apparently it's easy to get yourself some metal balls. You just buy them on eBay. I will leave a link in the description below to this tin bismuth and all the other stuff that's used in this video if you want to use any of these products or materials in a project like this so we're going to just melt this down on a hot plate and then we're going to pour it into the mold that's clamped together it, it just works i'm just using some basic mold making techniques here in terms of venting and pouring i've never done this before Let's get the mold apart. I'm surprised it doesn't come apart, but then again, I didn't use any draft angles and that's bad on me as a designer, as a production designer, to not use draft angles. I thought this would just pop out a little bit easier, but it didn't. Now the end parts here are screwed in and there's little divots in the uh, mold part that prevent it from just screwing out. So some force is required. But no damage was done, and the threads are just beautiful on this part. The finish is excellent. There are some tiny, tiny traces or hints of build lines here from the mold, which is astounding that it can pick that up. Other than that, the finish is fantastic. The flaws, which you see here, are for me pulling the part out of the mold and there are some support marks that I didn't clean off good enough in the mold and it's caused a little bit of marking in the part because I didn't do any draft angles I didn't think the part was going to be this tight in the mold I thought it would shrink a little bit and it would just sort of fall out of the mold but what I got was a much more precision type part than I had anticipated and giving us this excellent, excellent finish. Um, super, super pleased. The threads are all good. They're a little blackened or whatever, but they're still good. They're not chipped off or anything like that. Now you can see, I probably had some difficulty getting the parts out because I didn't clean them up really as good as I needed to. I probably should have printed them without supports at all. But they're really in good shape. We certainly could make another part. Center part was like almost not affected at all. I mean, you can see it's kind of brought out some of the, of the build lines a tiny bit from the heat. But goodness, that's nothing. Now, these guys, you can see these are the marks that were left in the head. I didn't take them down enough and in hindsight I, I probably should have printed it totally straight up but the, the hard part in 3d printing resin parts is cupping to where you've got these vacuum areas that can be created and so you end up having to print the mold a little bit at an angle like this to eliminate that cupping as much as possible and you can see where the parts really rubbed when they came out and you know i should be doing this with a draft angle and i didn't because i really didn't know what to expect and i didn't anticipate the parts being that tight in the mold um, and that's due to my lack of experience for for doing something like this and you know i don't know if this has even been done a lot but 
can see that's where it rubbed so same thing but the molds in good shape could make another one if we needed to maybe a viewer can leave a comment on what would work as a little bit of a release agent for something like this that'd be good info that's it for this part for right now in the next video we'll cover cleaning it up making the 3d printed end caps here for the hammer mounting a handle on it and kind of trying it out i am absolutely thrilled with the quality of this part and how easy it was to make a metal part like this and considering that it was made in a 3d printed mold pretty easy and very quick in terms of making a prototype this is really a great great way to make a quick metal part on a project for a client so if you are designing a product and it, maybe it's metal based or it has some metal parts certainly reach out we'd love to quote your project and use uh, this technology to speed up the development cycle of a product that your company may be considering uh, in the future link in the description below um, just fantastic fantastic super pleased Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.